go. <coughs> so, okay, uh, uh, finance and general purposes, the 11th of April, 2017. Apologies for absence. Um, I've had apologies from Councillor Best. He's away on holiday. <clears throat> and to receive apologies for absence. Uh, to accept apologies for absence. Oh, sorry, I beg your pardon. Yeah, I read the wrong word. I accept. <laughs> Thank you so sorry, much. Sorry, is Councillor Best supposed to be on this committee? Is there anybody else missing? Yes. Yeah. No, because his name's not on there. Oh, sorry, sorry. Apologies. <laughs> oh, that's a signature. <laughs> <laughs> And no reason for apology. Oh, okay. Nothing from Councillor Peel will take it. No. Do we record that Councillor Peel was absent? Yeah. Thank mm -hmm. you. And the answer is yes, we accept Councillor Best's apologies. Yes, we? thank you to answer yeah. that question. Because I'd love to be away on holiday, sir. So. <laughs> well, not anything like as much as me, I can tell you. Declarations of interests. To receive and consider any declarations of interest from members and officers under section 50 of the Local Government Act 2000, Standing Order 35. This requirement applies only in respect of matters which should be considered by the Council at this meeting. Uh, to declare any disclosable pecuniary interests? No. To declare any other interests? No. No? Okay. Representations from interested parties, a period of no longer than 10 minutes, will be allocated for members of the public to address the meeting about items on this agenda at the Chairman's discretion. We have no members of the public <coughs> present. Consideration of requests from interested parties. Therefore, we have none of those either. So we come to minutes of previous meetings. Finance and general purpose. Do you want me to make the proposition before you read it, everybody, or afterwards? Just giving people time yes. to look through the minutes. Um, I've got one point in the minutes. Okay, um, right. So whether you want to read your proposition yes. first or take that query on the minutes first. We'd better take the query first. Yes. Okay. Um, when we discussed the hub costs, I know you you said if you knock off the... No, you want me to sign it? Well, no, sit back. Did hey. you want, think you want to amend them? No, he doesn't, I do. All right. No, I wasn't there. <laughs> um, you mentioned, you did mention if we took off the hospitality officers, the two of them, um, that it reduced the the overall loss, and mm -hmm. that was they were in the early part of the year. That's correct, um, but um, <coughs> we still had a large part of the loss came in between September when I last looked at the figures. It was about six thousand eight hundred pounds more loss between end of September and end of January. So. Um, but it, it sort of implies that the reason for the loss was the fact we, um, you know, we spent a lot of money on those particular posts. Mm -hmm. um, so, would that be an amendment? What? Well, what, 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 what you, you need to say? <laughs> you need to tell her what amendment. you want her to yeah. say. Um, and then you need to vote on it. Right. Um, well, I, I, in that case, I'd propose that. Um, we note um, what's there is correct, but um, there was still a further six thousand eight hundred pounds, approx six thousand eight hundred pounds of further loss between end of September and end of January. Of how much? Six hundred. Six thousand eight hundred. Six thousand eight hundred between thirtieth of September and when I last looked at the figures, and the 31st of January. Mm -hmm. So I've added that in as a sentence. Yeah. Uh, you proposed, anybody going to second that amendment? Well, it's either got to be you or well, nobody, because no other there. It. I'm not going to, yes, I'm not going to vote on that, because I wasn't present. I do want to make an observation about something. And, and I think Malcolm wasn't present. No, Malcolm no, wasn't. I was only you and I confirmed. Only, yeah, and we were there. Yeah, okay, well, I've added it in. Yeah. So. 
Well, I've amended it. We're doing it right. <laughs> yeah. Can I ask a point of clarification? Yeah. Because there's a sentence in here which I've read at least twice, and I can't make it make sense. Right. And it's in the same part, it's 1648-01, yeah. and it's in the second paragraph, and it reads, overall the rooms rented by the museum are running at a loss. Yeah. However, at ah, this is an amenity for the community and the town, the council prepared to subsidise the costs. Now, should it read, as. however, as this is, yes. the yep. council is prepared to subsidise the costs? Yes. I'm assuming yes, that's what it's two, supposed yes, to be There's an S and an is missing. An S and is, yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. There we go. Oh, I've added that just in. being pedantic, but it no, does make it sense. Make sense. <laughs> it is, and yet, when you read it, you put them in automatically. Yeah, well, like, yeah. 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 <laughs> right. So Both so, have been amended. So, We'll get you to proofread the oracle before it goes out then. <laughs> just, just got yourself years, that job. Yeah, I'll, that be happy to. I'll, I'll just put a note <coughs> the minute. So I'm now going to read the proposition. Go on, yeah. Uh, to approve and sign the minutes of the finance and general purpose meeting, should it be committee meeting or is that all right? General it should be purpose purposes meeting, committee, purpose meeting. Meeting. committee meeting. We've got an abbreviation there. Held on the 28th of March 2017 as an accurate record. I'll propose it. But subject to the amendment, of course. Subject yeah, to the but I that's why we did it first. Yeah. yeah. I'll Are you going to second it? Yes. Those yes. in favour? <laughs> <laughs> God, this is good, isn't it? <laughs> Could your win up falling out? <laughs> Do you want me to sign yes, this? Yes, please. Then could, yeah. We'd have no minutes ever approved yeah. if we fell out over this. <laughs> What's the date? The uh, 11th. to receive the balance sheet and income and expenditure report up to the 31st of March 2017. You over to me? Yep. I've got no comments really on the balance sheet. I think that's all follows on from previous months and it's all pretty well obvious stuff. Um, one thing was confusing me in the um, income and expenditure. Um, was on the QVH management charge showing an income of minus 15,000. That was the amount, you know we talked about 15,000 normally, Yeah. a cheque gets written yeah, ah, yeah. and then it gets transferred. Well yeah. at the um, full council it was agreed that we can just credit that mm. out. Now I'm not sure right. why it's showing at a minus. I think it's showing because it's been taken out. Um, it's not. It's not physically happened, right? Um, but it's just probably showing like that at the moment. Um, so there should be a positive figure to to balance it out somewhere in the account, shouldn't it? Because it's, it's neutral, isn't it? Nothing has been transferred one way or the other. Yes. Well, it, it, well, it has. Uh, as far as I know, it has. No, it hasn't physically been transferred. But it d isn't it always that you have an amount of money that you put. Um, it's the management charge yes. for the QVH, but it, although it's a figure that goes in, it's not actually... Well, the budget uh, figure is 15,000. There's, there's so a transfer. Actually nothing's, nothing's actually been transferred, so I don't know why it should be... I don't know, I'm not very good at there's, accounting. There's a, there's a transfer... I mean, in the QVH accounts, if I remember correctly, we did see that the accounts there, when we last looked at those at the QVH meeting, um, where that money had been deducted from QVH to be paid to us. Mm -hmm. uh, so we've, 
In future years, it's going to be a nominal one pound, which well, will be less right, of a... Because normally what happens, it gets... This is the understanding that I got from Paul. A cheque gets written out of the QVA, QVH account. Yes. Goes into the... Um, into our account. Yeah. And then it gets transferred back, because it is an actual... We're not actually having £15,000 from the QVH. So how can you put it yes, in we are. as <laughs> minus an income of minus 15000 I don't understand it. It's offset by a loan going the other way. Yeah. Well, yes. Uh, well, I know that there's, yeah. there's a reason why, but yeah. it it's can cancels itself out. That's what I'm trying to It say. does, but on the other hand, auditors wouldn't know that. They'd be looking, no. or any, all the public, looking down what? this sheet and thinking, what's that? Yeah. It's I'll David, check David were you waving your hand about because you wish to say something? Well... Historically. Yeah. Well... It, <laughs> I don't. I must admit, I would have expected to have seen the fifteen thousand pounds as part of the actual income, um, because the money ought to pass from the QBH mm. to the town council. And of course, the, if it were to do so, the shortfall that exists between the um, income and expenditure disappears. Yeah, yeah, that 15,000 turns that 11,618 deficit into a small surplus of a few grand, mm. which... Technically, it should be 14,999, then, if we have got a normal pound, presumably. I know, that's next year. The one pound yes. is next year. Right. Right. It's going to be... We're just going to put a, charge him a pound to say we reserve the right to charge a fee, but this year we're just going to charge a pound um, because it's just silly to charge it to them and then give them a grant. They apply for a grant then from us and we yeah. give them a grant <laughs> to effectively pay our um, pay our management charge. Yes. I'll ask Paul why it's showing us that I'm on this. Okay, I've got another question. <clears throat> Courthouse, yep. who didn't receive any income in this period, is that because it's done quarterly or what? There's nothing down there. No rental income. That's that might well be the case, because I think, um, well, some of them do pay monthly, don't they? They have a monthly amount, so there should be some down there. But a uh, majority of them, I think, are quarterly or half yearly, yeah, aren't they? Yeah, I think the well, new one have paid the first year up front. Somebody's they? paid a year yeah. in advance. But that, yeah. that should be here. That, it's not in here, no, because it no. was in April that that went in. Oh, yeah. I see. It was so well, it's maybe, yeah. maybe you could check on that, because I'm surprised there's nothing in there at all. Yeah, I think we need to check that, yeah. <laughs> Can I ask another question yes. in relation to income? There's a line for brought forward budgets of just over £20,000. Yeah. Now that may be in relation to um, some form of capital project that was budgeted for in the previous year, not paid, and brought forward to this year to pay. But if it is, I can't remember what it would relate to, whether it's one or more items. It's not this S106 thing that we've got. This I don't S106 know. 106, but, is it? But the other something? point would be that even if you didn't play with the £15,000, mm. if that brought forward budget is in reality a transfer from reserves into our current account, then if you made that... So, yes. <laughs> um, if that money were to be transferred, that would also have had the effect of wiping out the loss. And since it was budgeted to bring it forward, I'm not sure why it hasn't been brought forward within the year. Unless, as I say, it was for a capital project not undertaken in the previous year that has also not been undertaken this year. So I think we would need to clarify. So what... which one was that one? So it's the brought forward budget figure in income. Twenty thousand pounds budgeted for. Mm -hmm. I'll check that one as well. And I don't know, in a sense, why it's not yeah, it's being utilised. It's been there all year, hasn't it, and showing like that. But we've never, 
We've never utilised it, so... But I'm just keen to try and find a way of ensuring that the income exceeds the expenditure marginally. <laughs> <laughs> and there seems to be two reasons why it ought to on the face of it. So, yeah, you know, so it's, it's, yeah. Without, yeah. Without, yeah. It, yeah, it does, yeah. And when you take into consideration we had 35 grand including VAT for asbestos mm. from two years ago, which net of VAT is about 27 and a bit thousands, um, we've done very well. Yes, I mean, when you look at the expenditure and see that we spent £100,000 more on Flatten House than we anticipated, and yet we're not... Um, that far out, really. That, that figure is completely erroneous. I mean, we've got to, we've got to do something with that yeah. this year, because, you see, if all you were going to spend at Flatten, for the whole of Flatten House, everything to do with Flatten, is to spend that 26,881 that's in the budget. You would never have any purchases in the hub, for a start, mm. <laughs> to make the 60,000. I mean, you're gonna have something like 15, 20 grand of purchases to make that sort of yeah. that 75 grand of expend, uh, uh, of income. Yes, I mean, the, the, so, the figures are clearly misleading. Shall we yeah, say. very, yeah. Which I've been saying most months yeah. throughout the year that you know we've had this we've had this uh, anomaly with this flatten house figure and we need we've talked about haven't we how we're gonna yeah. break this across a number of codes next time mm. so and, we've not got that. Yeah. and deal with it so um, but obviously a lot of this stuff hasn't been put down when somebody did the budget for flatten they didn't think of the purchases and consumables and stuff like that and there's all sorts of other things yeah associated with other costs in here that never found its way into that into that budget. That, mm -hmm. that barely covers gas and electric, I should think. Well, I was going to say, it's a very small figure, yeah. isn't it, for yeah. this building? Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's ridiculously small, yeah. yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, we, um, we had a very quiet month on income all round. I mean, the markets were incredibly low. Um, the, um, the hub did well and brought in more money than budgeted. Um, so that helped pull the, uh, well, kept, kept the hub going ahead of, ahead of budget. It's been ahead of budget all the way. The rooms, uh, even there, slightly up, which helped close the gap um, that we had. Uh, between budget and actual, um, more and people have died. sorry, more people have died. Yeah, more people have died. I, yeah, I keep reporting that one, and that, that's the that's the worrying one. That will always be a going up figure because the town's increasing in size. Yeah. All oh, right. Okay. And getting older. It'll always go up. Which means we're probably consistently underestimating the income from that. We yeah. we need to be increasing our budget year on year if that's the case with increasing population and being an elderly population as well, we probably need to increase that figure. Um, but, uh, yeah, other than that, um, yeah, income, income incredibly small, uh, only a quarter of what we were budgeting for, for the month yeah. of, of um, March. Um, and um, well, actually, expenditure... That's only, that's only the case if you put in that QVH management charge as some sort of reverse charge. Yeah. Because the actual mm. income was... It's 17 and a half. Well, if you take that out, it's it's in excess of the budgeted income of over 10,000. So it, it's not actually that bad. No. No. Um, now, that's grossly misleading with that QVH management charge in there. Um, Um, but uh, yeah, other than that expenditure, I mean, we finished the year sixty-eight and a half thousand on salaries, gross salaries inside budget. So we've done very well there. Um, the courthouse expenditure um, and courthouse income they finished, according to this, about seven thousand or six thousand different six. Six and a half, nearly seven thousand different, um, 
but um, we, we at one stage were closing the gap and next year we, we should be breaking even if not making a small mm -hmm. profit on courthouse um, the office costs were about budget roughly everything else is fairly well on apart from that ridiculous flatten house figure um, and uh, um, there's one or two small contingencies we put in for for some of the properties that we haven't um, things like the recreation ground and the car parks and stuff like that where we haven't where we haven't spent the small sums we put in but other than that everything is fairly well um, fairly close to budget really apart from um, grants we're a long way down on budget figure for grants what does OSM mean by the way? Sorry? OSM. what is it? OSM open space maintenance ah thank you <coughs> David can I just raise one um, issue if I can only find it again yeah the expenditure on markets of over £4,000 which is significantly over budget why is it that high i'm trying to think what what it is we spent money on that that's pushed it uh, up that high i'm looking for the figure i can't see it at the moment it's about two-thirds of the way down market four one six five as opposed to two eight seven oh i've got it yeah um a big chunk of it is rates we have to pay uh for the market mm. place um, that's one big cost. Um, but that would be in the budget, wouldn't it? I would have thought. It would be in the budget, yeah. But why, why we, why we didn't budget for more if rates were going up? I don't know. Um, we did, we did budget for an increase on the previous year. I'm sure when mm. Terry did the budgets then. Um, Might be just worth having a breakdown of that figure in due course. Yeah, so yeah. we could actually just, just work about, out. I just jammed my. Uh, Laptop, yeah, trying to get into sage at the moment to be able to give you it, yeah, because um, oh, market income is down a bit, and then that figure is uh, higher than budget, so um, that's seriously affecting the profitability of the markets. <coughs> I'll just see if I can get in and have a look. Would be on markets that would have cost for something that's not brought any money in, have we, or bought any equipment for anything? Uh, Christmas market, where does the income and, exp yeah, income and expenditure of that yeah. go? Because that's a big. Um, We don't pay out on things like the Italian market and things like that. In fact, they pay they us pay a small off. amount. Um, so there's no expenditure there to speak of. Only, as you say, a road closure for that what one. What about training for... Um, Probably be under a training budget rather than the market itself, yeah. I thought. Thinking well, about like <coughs> the general rates is 3025 mm. um, And farmer's market... There's an expenditure of 1,140. Mm. Um, That's more or less accounts for it, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So, so, the, rates. so the rates figure is actually higher than the entire budget we set for. Yeah. Sorry, it's, I keep upsetting it. Um, I would have thought that the market ought to be pretty much cost neutral 
So are we char charging the right rents for the market stalls? Oh, we're making plenty of we're making plenty of profit out of it, but mm. yeah. That's not quite as much profit as we'd anticipated. You got four grand of expenditure and twenty three oh, well, we can't complain. Nearly twenty four grand of income. Yeah. So mm -hmm. we're twenty we grand in the black. But nevertheless, when it's gone up mm -hmm. that much above budget. Then we need to <clears> we be need aware, to, don't we? Yeah. Because the auditors are gonna pick up on that. Yeah. If yeah. it's over what is it, so many percent, fifteen percent or something over more than what it was the previous time they pick up on it. Um, as an item? 10%. 10%, 10 is it? 10% variations mm. that you have to make analysis for. Yeah. Uh, you just have to explain it. Um, yeah. Why you've got these. So we'll need um, an answer. <laughs> the... <coughs> oh no, that was taken out. Um, yeah, it the right, it, yeah it's, it's rates and that other figure that I said. Um, farmer's market. Mm -hmm. So... <coughs> I mean, was that farmer's market a kind of one-off expenditure for some reason, or is that going to be what uh, we're going to expect? I think that's because the, um, let me see if it's broken down over the month. Just a bit slow over. Sorry if I'd had a chance to look at this earlier, I could have submitted a couple of questions <laughs> in advance because I know that Paul um, usually says, you know, it would be helpful if you did that, but I must admit I looked at these papers for the first time today. So. It's all right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a sort of, well... Um, I need to check this because it's a quarterly, it looks like it's a quarterly amount of money that's paid, but the, the description it's got down is uh, litter picking, which I'm assuming is it is litter picking after the farmer's market, is it? Could be after farmer's market. We certainly had something after Christmas market, I know. Yeah, we did. Yeah. yeah. There was something we used to have a separate budget line for that. Because of course we're just doing have a litter picker who yeah uh, relatively normal or something. Looks like it's around about eighty eighty pounds a month is charged quarterly. Yeah. Mm. Well, our signage and so on. Where's my come? No, well, I think we just put our own signage up. Yeah, there. we've got our own <coughs> signs that we use. But that makes it sound as if those expenditure figures are going to be the same this year plus a bit. Yeah, yeah. In yeah. which case, have we. We need has to our this year budget, budget, budget check our budget enough because we may find that we underestimated the market costs. Well, we asked Paul to put on to increase budget figures where he knew the increase, <coughs> like on rates, he knew what the rates increase was going to be, so that should have been budgeted for in this current year. And things like staffing costs and things, we, we knew what the increase was yeah. going to be there, the 1% pay rise, we knew what the pension and stuff was, so we knew quite a few of them. Um, it's just that there's anything where... Um, you know, Paul hasn't been able to estimate it. Mm. Mm. I'm not quite um, sure. Do you, uh, the rates, I, I'm not quite sure that we get that before we actually set our own uh, precept because we don't get it until no, after EMC have, have set their budgets and what they're I charging. Think, I think Paul usually guesstimates a percentage yeah. increase, and of course, yeah. this year, if they if they have gone up significantly this year, mm, you may it. not have managed to get that right. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, we need to check that. Um, and of course, looking at the figures, 
there is presumably another PWB loan interest payment to come out during this financial year, and that's another I've, 10k looking at that. I've been thinking that most of the year through. That it's been stuck at that for a long, long while, David. Mm. That 20k and 30k, it's been stuck at that for a very long while. Mm. So well, we know the 30k is the figure, so... Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, and they haven't expired yet. One's close to it. One's, it's 2019. Yeah. yeah, but the other one's um, got a lot longer. Yeah, well, yeah, about yeah. four yeah. years or something. The other yeah. One, isn't it? yeah, the... QBH will be paying for forever, but yeah. <coughs> yeah. Okay. Yep. Um, unless anybody else has got anything, that's pretty well, pretty well it. I think we've gone through it between us and picked out the. Yeah, I'll ask um, Paul about those farmers market figures just so. Mm. That work out exactly what they okay. are. Right, yeah. Um, so that's three, three lots of queries we've got for here. Yeah. There's the QVH management charge, there's a broad forward budget. But, yeah. a, and and a also core, about core house, house income. Core, yeah. <clears throat> core house income. Um, yeah. As to whether that's really right. I think that's that with item 165701 on the right. agenda. Um, to approve the further expenditure of £700 for the lettering on the war memorial. The clerk knows all yes. about this. Um, as you'll have seen, the war memorial has been cleaned. Um, <clears throat> and we had a, within the quote, a provisional um, amount of money set aside for uh, redoing the lettering. But after they cleaned it, they realised that there were more letters on there than they had thought. And so, whereas it was going to be £500, they have said it's probably going to be approximately a further £700 on the top. So it's gone from 500 to 12 Yes. Be, However, a lot of letters. that then still does, didn't really include if they've got to re-chisel any of the letters because I mean this isn't a very good example we're trying to get a good example to show you, but you'll see like that is yeah. um, you know a fit, you know, some of the carving is in yeah, it and if you look underneath bit. they're yeah. supposed that is supposed yeah. to be carving yeah. um, and you can't really see it the really. side that's most weathered the, is yeah, the most worn yeah so it clearly is weathering mm. Mm. so, so they're going to come out again and have a look at it um, and see exactly what they need to chisel out. Mm. Hannock has been down there today with the um, British Legion. Yeah. They've had a look. Um, and she's also gone back to the company. They've said that they, they've brought the price down, this extra 700, they've said, we'll meet you halfway. All right. Um, so they've brought it down to 360. But that still only includes repainting. It's not. They've, they've got to have a look and see what needs chiselling out. Right. So, I mean, uh, obviously the British Legion want it to happen. So we're wondering whether they may find a little bit of money that they might help us, you know, with it, mm -hmm. um, or whether we suck up the cost and pay it. But we've also um, there's a possibility of applying for a bit more grant. The War Memorial Trust said that. Put another application in and All right. look at it. Well, so we, we could get some money yeah. towards it. Yeah. But I'm just concerned that obviously we've got seven hundred pounds on the agenda because at the time that was what we all, what we thought we needed. Um, it may be a little bit more than that, or it may I be don't, less. Don't think we ought to get a proper quote as opposed to an estimate on. Uh, well, well, it's, it's going, difficult well, it's going... at the moment because it's one of those things that until they actually get in there and start... <laughs> well, they must know, be experienced enough change. to know how, how difficult it is for any self-respecting authority that did this. I if don't... done lots of it, why, is it no. why they can't give you a proper quote? Should, I should don't they think they realised that there was a whole lower yeah. level. Well, now they do. They, they looked at the top column and the top sections and yeah. you can see there's lettering there. The bottom bit, especially with sort of... Uh, dirt from vehicles yes, down yes. the bottom, the, the bottom cliffs was so dirty you wouldn't have known know, there was anything yeah, there. When they've, right. when they've cleaned the stone, 
they've suddenly realised there are the 1939-45 names there. I suppose they should have known because the other stuff was the Great War. Well, um, but, they know uh, now, don't they? They know now. <laughs> they can give us a proper quote now, yeah. I would have thought. Well, they can now, yes. I would have thought, yes. Um, they've, they've cleaned it right down all the way around and they've seen it's that sort of state. Mm -hmm. They're going to have to go back to their records and find all those names. They are. Yeah, they have done the already. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And yeah. I mean, it's probably not going to change that much. Every year, so. They've obviously brought it Well, you say that. <laughs> what do we, um, what do we get just, a proper figure from? from it's yeah. just, it's, sort of guessing. Yeah, the thing is, it's... I can, we can get a proper figure, but you could be sitting for another month before we can get that on another agenda to agree. And in the meantime, we may get some money back. We may get hmm? some loan money. Uh, not loan money, grant hmm. money. Hmm? Do we have to do it now because of things cut off? Do we have to give us... Well... Money? Other than not holding them up, that's the only other thing. Other than holding them up, holding us up, holding everything up. After um, approving the expenditure, it doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to thereafter commit ourselves to pay it, because all it's saying is to approve, to approve that yeah. expenditure. But and that's to a figure, yeah. mm. which we may or may not end up having so to get of to. up to £700? Pounds. It can be that. We could say up to £700. Yeah. 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 That's, you know, yes. yes, if we paid that's it to approve further expenditure of up to, yeah. Yeah. then that makes it yeah. clear yeah. that we would need to reconsider if it was going to go over that figure. Mm. Mm. But it may well be, I think you're probably right, I think the British Legion may very well come up with something, and if there is some grant funding may be available as well. Yeah. It may be that the overall cost to us won't be as, as, as mad bad, as that. Yeah. Mm. <coughs> but frankly, will... even if it is, I have to say, I think it, it's incumbent upon this town council mm. yeah. to maintain that yeah. memorial in perpetuity, yeah. Yeah, I agree almost yeah. regardless. Mm. Um, it, it would be a dereliction of our duty not and, to do okay. it, and if that's what it takes, I'm afraid yeah. that's what it takes. Yeah. And there have um, been very positive comments about how much mm. better how much it, mm. yeah, people how could appreciate it, it now. Much I don't it think I don't think it would mean a, another road closure, even if it did happen. But we don't really want them to go away and then have to come back and yeah. start all over again, <laughs> setting up that's that what barrier and I, I joined them machines for part of the chat this morning. Yeah. And they said no, they don't wouldn't have to do any more road closure because they can manage it within mm. the within, lane, within yeah. the area mm. that's now cordoned mm. off or shut off. It's behind. Yeah. The they, they can now they've Screens. cordoned it. What yeah. I'm saying is, if they took that away, went away, then we found some money and they came back. Yeah. They might have to close the road for half a day while they put that back around again, Good point. which absolutely. would drive the traders absolutely ballistic. Mm. Yeah. So, <laughs> and we probably also have to. Apply again. Yeah, we would. Yeah. For another road closure. Yeah. yeah. At another uh, £1,750. Yeah. Hmm. And that's which between, more which we want to avoid. Work, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Bigger than the lettering. So yeah. we're better off to pay the lettering while he's still on site, get him to do what he can. They're also going to do the smart water on the top as well. We've sorted that out. Right. Good. Good. Um, yeah. That's been uh, registered and sent to us. You don't pay for the smart water. Well, they've got the cherry picker there, there, you yeah. see. Yeah. Mm. That's another vehicle mm. that would have to come back. That's yeah. right, so exactly. we've, we've timed it so that yeah. they can do that at the same yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah. So it's to approve further expenditure of up to £700. So is that a proposition? Yes, I'm right. And I'll second I'll it. You've got a second. Are those in favour? The next thing. To approve. Are you working? Yes. Do, do you want to do it? Yeah, or do to approve the clerk's attendance at the SLCC Leadership in Action conference on the 8th and 9th of June 2017. Yes. Is this the same one that we've already talked about? Or had we talked? I think I mentioned you it. Mentioned you mentioned it. But I've actually put the information This is it in. now, yeah. Um, Can I just clarify, bearing in mind it's Stratford, which is it's a bit of a trek. Would you stay overnight? Well, you can, um, it's either 19 to mine. I think it's not, yeah, you said from 99 pounds or something. The thing is, the first night, there is a networking dinner in the evening. Oh, so you would, so do, I would do that and then come back, would you? Know? Assume that I would probably stay over on that night. The whole, if you do the whole thing, 
It's 399, I think. I've got that in my head. I thought it was on the street space. That includes your evening meal and so on. Yes. 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 Well, it's bearing in mind the extent of our budget. It's there for a purpose. It's to enable us to send our clerk or mm -hmm. yeah. other offices on these sort of things. So I'm quite happy to propose that we uh, yes. approve the clerk's attendance mm -hmm. on those oh. dates. Okay, I'll second it. Can I ask that you give us a sort of little resume? Oh yes, I will do. Yes, sure, I, I have part of your report. The yeah. I, I do always do that. On I the want to see the strategic potential of the council or not personally. That's what it's going to do here. So that'll be interesting. <laughs> Could somebody just make a fight? Do we need a proposition? I think I just... Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Those in favour? Right. Now, to review the new model financial regulations oh, 2016. Can I ask, when did we last have... 2014, and they are outdated. This is the new right. model, which... That, are the um, changes the bits in red? Yeah. They are. Right. And I'll, yeah. I'll um, <coughs> talk you them. Oh, right. Um, as well. There, are, there aren't many. There aren't many no. changes. And no. I, what I have done as well with the copy that you've got, I've amended it to include um, uh, how you sort of work at the moment and like the amounts of money that each committee's got. Yeah, what I'm allowed to spend, so I've right. amended that. <coughs> there are figures in there for that bit. Yeah, there right, are all yeah. figures. Right. Yeah. Um, on the on the page two, the difference is uh, one point six. Yeah. And on our original ones, um, it's a breach of these regulations by an employee's gross misconduct. As you can see now, it's, it's more. <laughs> it's more than that. So, yeah. uh, um, <clears throat> but obviously that covers, that's fine, that's fine isn't it? Um, the rest then, that's all the same. Um, in 2.2, um, there is, you can if you want, I've taken it out, but I have left it highlighted. Uh, it says, or a check signature. I know uh, some councils, the person that they choose to verify um, bank, record, bank statements and invoices, they sometimes choose to have somebody that isn't a cheque signatory as well. You've got somebody completely impartial from signing cheques, having mm -hmm. anything to do with that, looking over what cheques have been written out. So for this, what this is a councillor? A councillor being It would be a councillor that's not a cheque signatory. Right. But it's up to you whether you, because you haven't had it before, no. it's whether you want it or not. And I mean, <clears throat> I think in theory we would, we would have probably moved, or tried to have moved to a point where any councillor could be a check signer, because I don't see any reason why they shouldn't mm -hmm. be. It's proved really? to be problematic over the years because... The reality is yeah. getting enough people to... Be because Pretty frankly the turnover has been so huge yeah. yes. that um, that's proved probably unrealistic. Mm. Um, I'm quite happy with it coming out. Um, I mean, it seems to me that if our head of finance, for example, were to carry out that role, it's part of parcel of the sort of things he does. Mm -hmm. um, where it refers to chairman in here, it's referring because it's. Model rules for yes, all I mean, parishes of all sizes are substituted for mayor. mayor. Mm -hmm. well, well, no, that's not where I was going. Oh, um, right. <laughs> that is the chair of the council, not the chair of a subcommittee. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, Perhaps we should change it to I'll town mayor, just for the avoidance so of doubt, so wherever yeah. the word chairman yeah. appears. Yeah. Yeah. So that it's. Um, I think there is clear. one part where it does talk about chairman of committees yeah. a bit later on. Yeah. yeah. So obviously it need to use that phrase there. Yeah. Um, but just for clarity here, that it's not it's not chair of finance. It no. is it is the chair of the council. The council. <clears throat> yeah, which in our case is the town mayor. Um, yeah. Right. So that so we take out um, the piece P in red and add mayor, and also add mayor where, where it's needed. Um, yeah. 
uh, 4.8, which is on page <coughs> eight, um, <coughs> just here. Um, the last sentence, our current um, finance regulations doesn't have that last sentence in. Um, it's up to you whether you'd like to keep it in or whether you want to take it out. Where does the word material appear? It just it just oh, before sorry. it says explanations of material variances, and then it says for this oh, there, material. Do you know I've looked at that more than once and didn't even it's spot about it. Three times um, that's ridiculous. Now. It's within the previous yeah, sentence. I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh! You expect that it's going to be further in. I think that's probably what yeah. it was. Mm -hmm. um, I suppose the advantage of not having those words is that you can then adopt a common sense approach to the yeah. meaning of the word material and, and, mm. and justify it where appropriate. I, Rather I think than that's limiting yourself to this, Yeah, otherwise it gets very prescriptive, so I'm yeah. quite so happy to leave that out. So we're taking that out. Okay, that one out, and then I don't think there's much more other than. Um... Yes, when we get down to uh, paper, page 12. Um, in our current um, financial regulations, it says we have a cash flow, but that's not true because we don't. No, because we moved to a cashless. Yeah, council well, we were cashless ago. council, but we can't be with the hub. The hub's separate. Can it's that not, be still we, separate from yeah, being a cashless a council? Float that a, the clerk would have to yeah. buy things like stamps and things I mean, like we've been cashless we nominally for a long time. Mm. Mm. So obviously that has got to come out because yeah. well well it's not in the, the um, new regulations. The new regulations at six point two one says that we do not have a cash float, <coughs> and then obviously six point two two we don't need because we're following six point two one. Having said that, I do see that as an issue around the hub because the hub is. It's not a different commercial company or anything else. It's simply a trading name of an operation of the council itself. So the council is maintaining a cash flow, notwithstanding its financial regulation, unless we put in You'd have to put a some special words. About the herb, yeah. I mean, it would be possible, wouldn't it, to just put it sort of in brackets save in relation to the commercial operations of the hub or something like that. I'm mean, totally specific to Aundel. There, it, there are yeah. other forms of cash coming into the council too because mm. of room hire. Yes, but that's... It, yeah. Again, so this is only talking about a float, a float. to mm. go mm. out mm. and buy things. Yes. Yeah. But then there is a float, I suppose, in the hub mm. because if somebody goes and proffers a fiver for a cup of tea, You've got to give them change, which means you've got a float. Yes, the hub, the hub has a float, but the council doesn't. Mm. So if you if you just literally put in brackets after that, you might. save in relation to the trading arm, tra tra trading or save in relation to the to the operation of the hub. Mm. We know what it means. Yeah, you might get need. A uh, they're probably using the hub cash to do it, but you might need a float for things like room hire. I saw one day somebody came in to hire a room and it was £12 and they handed over a £20 note mm. and I think somebody put that £20 note into the hub takings that were in Joanna's desk, took out £20 of cash, gave them their £8 change and put the other 12 in the... Mm. So it's... And is that... Yeah, but that's, that's, yeah, that's a but misuse, that's so, really, of the... Yeah, but you could do that at your own purse, couldn't you? Well, you could, yeah. Yeah. Mm. You know, if you've got twenty pounds in your own purse change, you might do that. Yeah, but wouldn't you have to hold a float because I wouldn't I wouldn't necessarily want to hold a float just for that for that purpose. Um it would be very frustrating if somebody does want to buy a higher room, you know, make mm. change. Yeah. You then either got to invoice them after or but that's what they um, tend to get anyway. Or they round it down and this. say, have you got a tenner? I'll take a tenner instead of 20 or well, whatever. The alternative well, is that you can write them out a cheque for their cheque. Are the market people paying cash or any of the 
No, I appreciate you can't. You'd have to say to them, we'll send you a check. I mean, normally when somebody hires a room, they get an invoice and then they come back and play. Yeah. Especially as a lot of them are repeat bookings, and they yeah, they don't they don't come in off the street and say I want to hire a room and stand there and say oh here you are. Well, you tend to say right, well, will it take all the details mm. on your invoice? Yeah. So we've got a yeah. paper trail. But the market hmm. traders some pay cash, do they? Yeah, they pay cash and that gets banked straight away. Doesn't come back here. But they pay the right amount each time. Mm. Yeah. Right. They know there's no flow. Or a lot of them pay um, pay into our bank account now. They don't stand down there with the money. Right. <coughs> yeah. <coughs> anyway, all the time. The purpose here, is that, that it's got there. here is it's purely talking about a uh, float that you would have yeah. by small items, <coughs> Yeah. Which is which not many councils do have. No. Okay, well, if we, take, if we take this out. Then presumably, if we've got the problem, we can put it back in. I suppose so. We could, but are we going to find ourselves with the auditors in breach of our regulations when they say you have a float downstairs in the hub? Well, that's why I'm I, suggesting you put in that. What order. I suggest, yeah. I I think I should do is <coughs> I will ask the internal auditors mm. yeah. what they suggest. Yeah. Okay. Good thing. Yeah. Yes. I mean, we could say there are two options. We leave it as it is. But in reality, there will be this happening in the hub. Mm -hmm. And if you feel that it's necessary, we could add some wording in. About the hub. About the hub specifically. Separate, yeah. uh, you know, you could have a, a, you know, a separate, um, a separate financial regulations that we have with the hub. Regulation. I can't remember off the top of my head what he said about the hub now and the cash, um, the float with the hub. Um, I can't remember what he... He made some comments about it in that interim yes, report, did. but he I can't did. remember now exactly what he said. But there was nothing in last year's um, uh, internal audit report uh, at the end of year report, was there? No. no. And it was happening then, wasn't it? Oh yeah, but were they told it was happening? Well, they would have. It would be very difficult. I mean, if you went in there and spotted what was actually happening exactly. in practice, I mean, you'd, you'd know, know there'd be a float because you know there'd have to cash. be a float. And you know that somebody is banking that cash, and um, they, you know, they would have known. They, they would know what's going on. Well, the, the audit, the, the, the interim audit thing, they knew because they knew about them putting the takings mm. in the office. We, we told them. We, we told them we there told was them. a float, and we told them about the money in and the we, oven yeah. and what And there've been all sorts of yeah. That's how they knew that, the Malcolm and I told them. <laughs> talking. I of, them sorry. Yeah, sorry. I was going to say talking of. That aspect of matters. Presumably, the insurers are aware that there is some banking of cash, mm. notwithstanding the fact that they yes, if you've got insurers for X amounts of money to be on site, they are as of thirtieth of November last year, but they weren't prior to that. Right. Well, as long as they are horrified from to now find out what we were doing. <laughs> well, yeah, but some of what was going on was not right. Yeah. Um. Okay. I will. I can speak to. Him. We'll speak to him, and mm -hmm. it, if it requires the kind of amendment I suggested, fine. And if it doesn't, let's leave it as it is. Yeah. <coughs> so, if if not, you want to leave it that we don't have a float. Yeah. Yeah, we don't want to. Unless have we have to put in. something in about the hubs float. Yeah. It means a lot of, for a very small amount of money, a lot of additional yes. uh, financial checks and things. Yeah. It's, it's a pain, mm. but um, I'm just wondering if we're covered if we don't. But then John Marshall will know. Are we on page 15 now? Right, yeah. So, so that. We'll leave that now and then. Um, right, the diff there is a bit of difference with regards to contracts. Page 15. Um, in our current uh, financial regulations, um, 
We've got the figure as 60,000 in square brackets. But in the new ones, it says 25, and it's a figure that isn't one that you can change. change. I think this was a point that former Councillor Dainton made at some stage. I seem to remember her raising this mm. and expressing some surprise that we didn't actually seem to be complying with this or on the face of it. So, yeah. I think it's interesting because one notice that we talked about the public contracts directive and one just wonders what the effect of the Great Repeal Act will be. Yeah. And we may have to change the wording again at some point. <laughs> Um, so that is the case if it's changed, but the, you, you, there's nothing much you can do about it. You've got to leave it as it is. Um, then next page 17, there's an additional point 13.4, which we did not have in ours, which is stores and equipment. Um, <clears throat> I must say it was quite interesting because I was initially glanced through this and spotted that was a change. So I read that. And I thought, oh, it's a typing error. It should say stocks and shares. And then, of course, I read the bit above it and realised, <laughs> yes. no, it really does mean stocks, stocks and stores. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's an extra uh, line that's in there, I think. Can I then just write in relation to that's page 18 and 14.2, where there's this item about no tangible movable property should be purchased? unless it doesn't exceed £250 in value. Bearing in mind that the clerk has kind of delegated authority to spend up to £500, I wondered whether that figure should be 500 rather than 250 mm. oh, What have we got? Have we already done it? Yeah, we had a 250 in the room. But again, because it's a figure that's not in a bracket, I don't know whether we can change things that aren't in brackets. Right, I mean, if we are not allowed to change it, then we'll have to stay. But if it um, is possible, then it would seem to make some sense to align it with yeah. the other figure. But if you're going to be asking the internal auditor, you could always ask him that question as well. No, <coughs> there's a reason why it's not bracketed. Yeah. Um, I don't think there are any other specific changes. Can, can I just ask in general terms? The way this is written... It appears that at times it's talking about the clerk and the RFO as being two distinct people, mm -hmm. whereas of course, in the case of this same. council, it's one and the same person. I think Query. it does say that in section one, doesn't it? And um, one point eight. Right, let me just have a look at one point eight. Right, right at the bottom. The clerk. Has yes, it does it. say that. So perhaps one simply has to read. Yeah. Okay. So you read the references where it's talking about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. one or other or both in the light of that presumably the other thing is this i mean in practical terms just to complicate the matter still further this council is currently employing somebody whose roles include dealing with various financial transactions mm -hmm. and of course there's no specific reference as far as i can see to you having the power to delegate to another, another employee mm. certain aspects of your RFO role. And I just wondered whether it, there should be something in here. I mean, clearly, we've operated without it being in here mm. for years, mm. but it just struck me as yeah. I went through it as I, to whether or not we should have to be answerable for it. Oh, yes, the RFO would be yeah. ultimately so, responsible. Yeah. Yeah, I suppose, but I just wonder whether you why. recognise the fact yeah. that in practice, some of these functions are, are, carried out by are the actually finance, carried out by yeah. somebody mm. operating, if you like, below the clerk. Yeah. It, it's worth asking oh, because yeah. if you're ultimately the one who's responsible, you may not want something in written that you delegate. We may not want to delegate. That might be the other point. <laughs> and you may not want to delegate, yeah. Well, I suppose that's another question you can raise with the internal yeah. auditor. I mean, he may just think we're being super sort of yeah. cautious, but because I'd rather, I'd rather be stops there, then mm. thought of in that way, at least. Yeah. When it comes to talking about our internal processes, we can certainly point to tonight's meeting and yeah. make it clear that, A, we've reviewed these functions. Oh, and that's another thing. <laughs> when... 
when you go through this, and I can't remember the specifics, but there are a number of points where it says that you should look at certain things not less than every two years or something. Oh, yes, that, yeah. that, that yeah. quarterly, that one. And the it struck me that although that's clearly in our current financial regulations, I'm not entirely sure that we've ever actually done it. No, that's why at the May meeting, the May annual meeting that you have, not the town meeting, yeah. the full council, um, that when you're appointing your committee members, then there you, you will appoint a person who's going to, every quarter, have a look at the invoices, bank statements, mm. check and... Yes. Um, but it's not only that, is it? I mean, there's things like... Direct debits. Every two years we've got to look at the direct debits yeah. and so on. So it just struck me that, have, that at one meeting... It, no, I don't think we have. <laughs> um, at least I have no recollection I of it. No it may be that it's happened and then it slipped, but it certainly yeah. hasn't happened for a while. And yet looking at this, it ought to. And it would be so easy at one designated meeting a year of this committee... Yeah. We oh, simply yeah. review that thing because it's mm -hmm. likely to be just a question of rubber stamping it and saying yes, we authorise it. But again, <coughs> the point of view of an audit trail, we can then say the regulations say, and this is when we do it, and there's the minute of it. There again, we were told Malcolm and I at the at the end of wash up at the end of that interim audit, mm -hmm. that um, additional audit, <coughs> that it had been done every year apart from the current year and was suggesting that we were all remiss in our duties in not in not doing it but in every other previous year uh, it was stated it had been done well i, like, I can always look back through uh, well i don't recall it but it may be that it was i mean it's not the sort of memorable thing that you're necessarily yeah, I mean, going to think be, gosh that was a highlight of my council yeah, year when well, we renewed the direct you have debit a list of the direct debits <laughs> and you just and there's just a line saying, <coughs> does the council approve, approve, approve direct these direct for a further year? Uh, and it would be it so makes, easy to yeah. do. Yeah. Mm. Never. I do, but I don't think it's happened. I, I'm Never. A, I'll, Not like I'll that, have that in which actually makes this exercise quite a useful one because A, clearly it did need updating to be mm. properly compliant, but B, does that actually make you think about your processes? Mm. Obviously yeah, some things that have come out of tonight which will affect what we do. Mm. That is what it, I mean, that is what it's there for, yeah. really, I think. It mm. does yeah, I've just, I've just found those sections in sort of 6.7, 6 6.8, 6.9. There's a lot of content in here that we need to get our heads around. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's a copy of this in our handbook, or at least there's yeah. a copy of our last one, so presumably mm. once we've actually finalised sorting this out, we're going to have to make sure that each council Everybody has a copy of the new one. And well, it doesn't have to go to a full council for approval anyway. Mm. Um, Does it have to be approved by full well, council as opposed to this commission? I would have thought so. Um, I know I think you've got it in these terms of reference that you review, but I don't think you approve. The full council. Well, it, it makes sense actually for us to recommend to full council. Yeah, no, it's pretty unlikely that anybody in full council is going to turn around and say, I'm not happy with this, in reality. Yeah, mm. you, uh, this, this, in terms of reference, you review mm. the financial regulations, but they would need to go to the full council for adoption. Mm. I'm all for it. It, it underlines yeah. with all councillors that mm. they exist and, yes. but, and that mm. we're doing the work of. of yeah. yeah. Not updating them. They can't say they don't know, they weren't informed, they, they haven't, the thing. Yeah. They haven't been told about it, we've made changes behind their backs, etc, yeah. etc. Et mm. If it's got to go to full council, yeah. then full council... It should do, um, it yeah. should do. your financial yeah. regulations should be approved by full yeah. council. It's in their pack, they will yeah. have the documents, they will have everything, and they will have the chance to, to go through it in detail, mm -hmm. so yeah. But in the meantime, Do I mean, we I'm on the website publish something saying the financial regulations were... Financial regulations are on I think are they're actually on the yes. site itself. Yeah. And if so, we make the point that they've now been updated and put new ones... Yes, yeah, well, new on the top, it, tells, there's a date there which says, yeah. you know, they were approved... Yeah. I appreciate that. I where it is, I'm thinking yeah. about the oh, worlds yeah. of this yeah. world who are determined to prove in some way that we don't have all these things in place. Mm. No, so it would be nice to remind um, them. 
I suppose you could run it on the ticket tape thing across the top for a week or two. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. That yes. If we made a statement. No, you don't need to make a statement. The, what happens is the, the current financial regulations are available right. on the website. <coughs> so if anybody rings up and says, can I see your financial regulations, you say, yes, you can. They're on, oh, the they're on the website. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll get <coughs> into one of these points that you've raised. Um, I mean, it's not going to go to the next Tuesday's full council meeting. That's probably too ambitious. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so I saw it'll probably roll over to the May one, I should think. Mm -hmm. Which actually is not a bad thing because then. Mm. Start of the <coughs> start, yeah. start yeah. financial year. Yeah. 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 Start yeah. with new regulations. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a good time to start them. Mm. Yeah. Right. So have we dealt with that one? So I now read the next bit. Please note this in view of the special and all confidential nature of the business about to be transacted. It is advisable in the public interest that the public be temporarily excluded and they are instructed to withdraw. Normally I would second it, but I have to say, since there is nothing on the agenda to which this can relate, why are we doing this? Yes, I don't know. I don't even know why it's still on there. I think I pointed it out to you when you sent a draft yeah, out. I said, well, uh, hang on yeah. a minute, what, what are we supposed to be discussing? Because it's not on the agenda. Yeah, I think I took the actual things out. Which and then forgot like, to actually take yeah, them. Yeah, I did forgot to take that out. Oh, well. So I'll, I'll, um, um, yeah, um, we did that. Um, yeah, um, just withdraw that. And, yeah. <laughs> and I shall withdraw the last uh, Which case? Correspondence for action. I haven't got anything. Correspondence for information. None of that either. This has to be a record. Mm. Mm. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, we'll declare the meeting closed. I shall uh, just.